as a finance professional in a disrupted business landscape, what does it take to be in demand? What does it take to attract great paying international roles? If you're an ICANN member, it'll just take one exam. That's all it takes to complete the globally recognized SEMA professional qualification and the internationally in respected CGMA designation. As a SEMA member and a CGMA designation holder, employers will look at you as a finance professional, constantly acquiring new skills to add value to the business. That's why they'll be willing to pay premium to hire and retain you. If you have five years of relevant experience and are an ICANN member, you can directly sit for the final exam of the SEMA professional qualification, the strategic case study exam. Start studying the SEMA professional qualification. Prepare to make an impact. Ah, uh, good evening, professional colleagues, friends, students, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to be your host today on another edition of ICANN on Air. Today, the seventh day of the seventh month in the year 2022, telling you about the double figure, double digit. And that is why we have brought a topic that is very peculiar to our profession that all the people too need to have understanding of. And today we will be talking on the topic, audit regulation. What professional accountant should know? Uh, this was a mandate uh, from the Financial Reporting Council Act 2021. And every one of us is expected to be acquainted with some of the things that are actually happening in the profession today. And uh, I will be guesting no other person, a teacher par excellence, uh, uh, one of our mentors who have been mentoring the younger generation, no other person than Dr. Iyayi Anyara. Uh, PhD, FFAR, MNIM, and FCA. Uh, he is the director, head director of public sector uh, accounting standard of the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria. He was the acting executive secretary and uh, the chief, uh, 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 the executive secretary and the CEO of the Financial Reporting Council uh, from uh, March 1st, uh, 2021 to May 18, 2021. Uh, he has over three decades industrial experience of much which has been in financial reporting and management, accounting standard setting and fit and uh, committee uh, of chart of account for Nigeria, as well as member of the IPSA GAP analysis committee is a fellow of so many professional body including our own noble uh, profession the institute of chartered accountant of nigeria also a member of the association of forensic accountant researcher alpha a member of the nigeria institute of management nim uh, he is a regular speaker uh, let me just interest you is a teacher not a lecturer uh, he has his first class honor and a uh, master degree in accounting uh, from the University of uh, Unsica and uh, Port Harcourt, respectively, and bag his PhD from the Babcock University in Elysian, uh, Ogun State. This evening, I uh, will be guesting uh, Dr. Iyaye Ayara, uh, OF FCA, who will be talking to us on audit regulation what professional accountant need to know. I'm sure you've got your pen and your paper very close to you because we will not be lecturing today. We will be teaching you to simplify what this regulation 
is all about. And I'm sure that will equip us more as professional and also as friend of our, our noble uh, profession. Uh, we'll be going on a very short break. And well, I will be back. I will be guesting our guest for today. See you very shortly. Welcome back, and it's my pleasure to have with me on the Thursday episode of uh, the Icon on Air. No other person than Doctor Hiai Ayara, FCA, uh, someone I always regard to as my mentor. Doctor, good evening, and pleasure to have you on board. Thank you very much, and uh, it's my pleasure to be amongst my colleagues and especially the one being anchored by Lisa Son, uh, my very good friend. I sincerely appreciate the opportunity to once more enlighten my colleagues on these audio revelations. Uh, before you start, let me appreciate my great institute for the doggedness in um, enlightening the members on this audit regulation. Since um, the audit regulations came into being, the Institute has continuously um, enlightened members on the audit regulations. I sincerely appreciate this. And on behalf of the council, I, I, I say thank you very much. Oh, thank you too to you, uh, Doctor. You can say that about our great institute, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. We are known to equip and educate our members. Not only on this, this is show that we have every Tuesday and Thursday, and it's all about educating our members on the things that they need to know. Let's go straight to the business of today, uh, my doctor. Sir, I can allude to this. Your colleagues, mentees like us, Call and describe you as teacher, not a lecturer, because of the way you simplify things. As a matter of fact, I was under your tutelage years back in one of the districts when you came to discuss this thing when it started years back. Please, sir, can you educate our viewers, our listeners, what is audit regulation? Thank you. Um, our regulation by now should be a household name, and uh, I think the concept is something everybody will know. But let me start again by appreciating all the people on this platform. I, I see it as an investment um, towards um, getting to do the right thing at the right time. And before we go straight into talking about the other regulation, you will agree with me uh, some that um, the equity and credit markets are amongst the most efficient markets the world over. But particularly in economically developed countries um, thrive on efficient operation of these markets. And how do they thrive on it? They depend solely on credible um, financial information. And who are the people who ensure credible financial information? Of course, any financial information that does not have the attestation, the opinion of auditors, such information will not be taken to be credible. 
And in order to impart, in order to give trust to this credible information, the Financial Reporting Council, in line with the Act establishing it, especially Section 61, that gives the Council the statutory power to inspect um, accounting firms that have more than 20 um, public interest entities that the council should uh, inspect them on annual basis, why those with less than 20 uh, public interest entities should be uh, inspected every three years. The council therefore decided to put in place what I will call um, rules guidelines to enable both the uh, inspectees and the inspectors to be guided on how the inspection, how to carry out audit work. And in that aspect, the audit regulation um, was um, battered. And uh, of course, as you all know, it wasn't just um, a thought by the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria. Um, it was actually done by the stakeholders because um, I can precisely tell you on um, October 18, 2018, the council set up um, a 14 man what we we'll call an audit regulation working group to put in place requirements for carrying out um, audit of public interest entities. And that includes um, what is expected of an auditor, um, how an auditor can register with FRC, how auditor can be sanctioned, how auditor is expected to be independent. And of course, I'll be using the word auditor, auditor. Remember that the law talks about those professionals engaged in financial reporting processes. I want to state at the issue that the audit regulation is not just only meant for auditors, it's meant for other service providers who are professionals that are engaged in financial reporting process. Remember, we have layers. We have the law, we have the regulation, we have the rules, we have others. So we view our strength from the Financial Reporting Council Act of number six of 2011, like I said, especially section 61, if you want to see section 26A to H, and also section 73 of the Financial Reporting Council Act, um, that gave us um, the base to put into place what every registered auditor should know in carrying out his or her responsibilities. Thank you, sir. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. Yeah, you just uh, said it all, that uh, it's important for everyone uh, who is out there, the stakeholders, to have a credible financial information. And this only can be attested to you by auditors. But you've said it that the regulation is not only for the auditors, but for other layers uh, who has one or two things to do about the financial uh, uh, preparation. Let me go straight to another question uh, as we move on. That uh, if you look at the duties that uh, FRC is putting out, uh, this seems to be conflicted. How, do, how does FRC intend to resolve conflicts between PAOs and itself with respect to sanction as contained in the audit regulation, particularly ensuring that it does not result into multiple action on the professional. Thank you very much, uh, the uncle. Um, surprisingly to me, maybe the conflict is uh, only the imagination of the um, anchor or the person that raised it. Um, in FRC, we have not seen any conflicts uh, because um, we are working um, collaboratively 
with professional accounting organizations. And uh, to be very honest, we have to tell ourselves the simple truth. Um, in all jurisdictions, uh, let me cite um, instances. Uh, we have Financial Reporting Council of UK that um, oversize audit function. We have the Public Companies Accounting Oversight Board of US that oversize um, audit function. We have the um, Independent uh, Regulatory Board of Audit in South Africa. They oversight um, audit function. And in all these jurisdictions, including Mauritius, they have um, professional accounting organizations. There is never a conflict between the function of a regulatory body and the professional accounting organization. However, what is expected is that the two work collaboratively to ensure that the profession called accounting um, thrives and thrives very well. There are specific responsibilities for each. Mm -hmm. Professional accounting organizations um, of which uh, I have the privilege of being a, a member of our great institute. I mean, it's clearly stated what their um, responsibilities and their roles are. And the regulator like FRC also have um, their roles and responsibilities um, clearly stated by the different laws establishing them. Um, my distinguished audience, um, if anybody has the intent or the thinking that there is a conflict, I stand here to disabuse the person's mind. And moreover, if you look at our law, section 32 of our law, empowers the council to enter into a memorandum of understanding with mm. professional accounting organizations and regulatory bodies to carry out um, uh, its responsibilities. Uh, I would wonder, and I've checked out, I've never seen um, where there is conflict. And yeah. I, I, wouldn't, oh. I wouldn't want to go okay. that line. Um, oh. It's collaboration, oh, okay. sir. Thank you. you. You said it right. You said, well, that might be an imagination. But you know, we are out there to clear and disabuse some of the things that our people must have conceived. And uh, from your explanation, it's clear that uh, both the FRC and uh, the PAOs are expected to collaborate to make accounting profession uh, the top notch that is expected of. Uh, like we know, this is an interactive session, and our members, our viewers are expected to throw in questions at us. And I can see a question from uh, Razak Abidemi. Uh, he is saying that the FRC Act and audit regulation does not clarify if all directors of a private company must register with FRCA. Some firm use their judgment on this. Sir, can you throw more light so that Razak can have better understanding on that question? Thank you very much again, Hussein. Um, Razak, uh, that's a very uh, beautiful um, question. Um, I think, and I put forward that the act and the audit regulations are quite clear. I wouldn't uh, subscribe that all directors know. Because the act specified that professional accountants, I think it's section 41, professional accountants and all other professionals engage in financial reporting process. So if you're a director of a company, you are not engaged in financial reporting process, you are not bound to register with FRS. But the question will be, in what capacity are you as a director, aren't you actually approving um, financial but it is incumbent on you to have this best of judgment to say, yes, my activity uh, entails doing this. The act, like I said, um, in section 41 and section 42, uh, made it clear that it's only those engaged in financial reporting um, process. So it will be overreaching if FRC uh, says that all directors of private company I don't think it is the spirit of the art, and it's not the spirit 
of the audit regulation. Um, without sounding any more this, I, I participated in the process of uh, batting the act and the audit regulation. Uh, we never felt it should be um, for all directors. The registration with FRC is clearly for those who are engaged in financial reporting process. Thank brilliant, you. Br brilliant. You've just said it all. Section 41 and Section 42 are uh, spelled it out. That is for professional accountants and those that engage in financial reporting. So it doesn't cut across. So once you know you have easy things to do with financial reporting, then you must register. Uh, this will not take me, you know, in conjunction with what we have been hearing. Uh, I, I want your own uh, 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 opinion on the compliance level of this audit regulation in Nigeria. Is it high, average, low, or poor? Can you educate our members at least to have understanding uh, since the inception? You know, you are part of the people that back this act. Um, thank you. Um, I will excuse myself from uh, being uh, a judge in my own case. Um, <laughs> writing, <laughs> writing the number of high uh, average or low. Um, but also, um, let all of us say, instead of actually looking at um, exact position, can I draw your mind back that audit regulation is not barely a year effective. In fact, it's not even up to a year, it's seven months. Though it came into effect um, uh, 25th uh, January 2021, remember there was um, a transitional period okay. to enable everybody get enlightened, to get everybody get acquainted. So um, effectively, the regulation uh, came into being 2022 January. So wouldn't it be too premature to too, too early to try to assess whether it's high, low, and low. However, I want to tell you that from the responses and from the collaboration we are getting, I, I think um, I, 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 you are making me tempted to, to mark myself. No, um, it, it is a process and we are seeing green life in the process. And um, I think everybody is desirous to see it work. I think that, that would be my, my response rather than saying whether it's high or whether low. Um, exactly this program and other programs, like I started at, uh, acknowledging the Institute, uh, are all geared towards making the audit regulation very effective. That, that, that would be my uh, take on it. Thank you. I, I think, uh, you know, you've just put uh, a clarity to some of these things to let us know that there was a transition period, uh, which was when that uh, act was given back to, and uh, the effective date of the implementation of this FRC was actually January 2022, barely seven months. And uh, I think it's clearer to people. But one thing I know is that people's interests are actually being drawn to this. Understanding the fact that uh, the finance is key to the survival of every business. Doctor, let me pick you on this. That how can the successful implementation of this audit regulation, uh, which the implementation is just seven months old, boosts the acceptance of Nigeria financial report in the global community. Considering the fact that the world is global village now, how can this be acceptable? Okay, thanks. Um, that, that's a very wonderful uh, question. And um, I, will, I will ask you to give me actual, some more time to dwell on it um, because I think one of the problems we have is um, lack of understanding. When I started, I did mention that um, capital market tribes on credible um, financial reports. And 
credible financial report also thrives on effective, independent oversight body. For the economy and for investment climate in Nigeria, I will tell you that capital flows where there is strong discipline. And you can only have strong discipline if you have an effective, uh, independent um, oversight body with transparent, uh, unbiased, and objective regulation. So here in Nigeria, prior to the release of the audit regulation 2020, the international community did not see Nigeria as serving an independent oversight body on audit regulation, simply because we Hitato did not do what we ought to have done by putting on the audit regulations. The council deliberately did not effect the provisions of section 61 that entails inspection of audit firms because of lack of the audit regulation. Because we needed to spell out the methodology, the rules, the expectations before. Otherwise, it would be like ambushing the, the professionals. So it took us quite a while, um, like I did mention, um, in October 2018, we looked at um, the big four audit firm, we looked at the small and medium practice, we looked at the regulatory bodies that have one thing or the other to do with audit. We also looked at the Attorney General, the Office, the uh, Federal Minister of um, Justice and Office of the Attorney General of the Federation. We also went to the auditorial for the Federation and requested the representatives. About 14 of them met severally and came up with this. So internationally, sir, there is this forum called International Forum of Independent Audit Regulators. Prior to this um, audit regulation, they never had anything to do with Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria and by extension, Nigeria. It is when this um, audit regulation came into being that IFIA extended their hand of fellowship. And what does IFIA do? IFIA gives confidence, comfort to their members that having satisfied the audit regulation processes of this division, that you can they can vouch for the auditing of the financial statements. Again, I want to let you know, because you brought a very critical issue. There is this regulation in the UK that has been in existence since 2006, amended continuously up to 2020. And that's what they call third country audit. Third country audit is a situation where an issuer outside in the UK that has an issue that is to have um, listed on the floor of um, exchange in UK, that they cannot accept their audited financial statements if such country does not have the independent audit um, um, uh, regulated oversight body. And it will shock you to know that UK comes to Nigeria, the UK FRC comes to Nigeria to inspect, review the audit processes, audit procedures of the firm that audit the accounts that are filed in the UK. And you know, we have some sizable number of companies in Nigeria that have dual listing. Mm, yeah. With this, we have issues. And we our the little resources are being filtered out by capital flight. In the same process, sir, the same you can have what they call reciprocity in audit. Reciprocity means that any jurisdiction they have a judge 
their auditing process to be of equivalent status with BIAS, that they will not go to review their uh, audit process, that they will accept the audited financial statement of such decisions in the UK. It will surprise me to note that it's only two countries in Africa, and that is South Africa and Mauritius, because they have independent audit oversight body. So you can give reciprocity level to South Africa, reciprocity level to Mauritius, they don't give to Nigeria. It is until we get this audit regulation effectively working that we will get to that level. We are answering the largest economy in mouth, we are answering the largest population, but the little, little, little gritties we don't get because of this. Um, uh, so in a sense, sir, that's why I say you give me the two talk. In a sense, it is so beneficial to the economy. It will boost investment. It will make sure that even the little uh, capital flights are going away from these people coming to inspect our, our even the big four will no longer be there. And that is why I am so passionate about it and believe that um, we will hit the ground running and get all these things done. Thank you. I'm sorry for taking more time on the No, it is, I, it, is, it is highly expected, uh, Dr. Uh, Ayara. The truth of it is uh, the reason why the Institute is putting this up is to create the awareness for our members to know the importance why this audit regulation must uh, actually work. Uh, just talking about the independent uh, regulators, you're talking about the to have confidence and uh, the comfort of some of these uh, the uh, uh, the financials we're talking of the top party audit, uh, the reciprocity. Uh, you know, as big as we are, if you are able to walk through this, which I believe my professional colleagues are listening to. Uh, definitely, if you give a boost to our economy and uh, we can be ranked among uh, the top-notch class uh, in the world. Uh, Suleiman is asking a question uh, before I go to my own question. And he is saying, what is the council? Why is the council? Why, Why have they not been auditing the small practice fair for compliance with the regulations and rules? and also the delay in the issuance of certificates uh, for those that have registered uh, with FRCS. Thank you so much, Yonan. Ismail, um, Ismail, Ismail, permit me in the language. Um, why hasn't the FRC started auditing small practice firms? Yes. We have not because we want them to get thoroughly educated, get thoroughly enlightened, and get prepared for the eventuality. We wouldn't want to rush into beating them. And tomorrow it is the same you that will be saying we want to kill the small and medium practices. <laughs> and one good thing about it is we are deliberately taking time to enlighten. We are deliberately taking time to make sure the structures are right so that we will we'll reduce the, the number of um, contentious issues when, excuse me, when the audit um, oversight um, reaches the small and medium practices. Again, uh Okay. We, 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 again, we are talking with the professional accounting organizations to enter into um, MOU so as to feed some of these, like I said, collaboratively to the professional accounting organizations to be able. So we need to uh, finalize the agreements, um, uh, make sure that the procedures are clearly stated so that it will be transparent. So that the objective. Um, don't run away, we'll be there, but be ready to receive the inspectors when they come. But that will give you opportunity to get your ass together and uh, be ready for us. On the second leg, so, sorry, um, please, since um, 2019 August, 
the financial reporting council stopped issuing certificate of registration we aligned with the digitization process once we stopped the biometrics you can in the comfort of your bedroom do your registration and you get email conveying your registration number and that is what we need we are not a professional accounting institution that will be bothering so much in issuing you certificates so we look at how to reduce the cost and to make everything effective so if by now you are still expecting certificate of registration um, i think what the the highest thing we want to do could be to make it so that you can print it online we we, we have jettisoned insurance of uh, certificate to registration so i uh, apologies if you are not aware. We've been telling it's on our website. We is uh, in every enlightenment program we do. We, we let people know about that. So don't expect um, certificate of registration from us. Thank you. Very bri very brilliant response to uh, uh, Ismail's uh, question. Uh, the FRCN has uh, hyped the game, digitalizing it not to be left uh, uh, behind uh, the same. And uh, to the other leg, I love the approach that you are not using sledgehammer to kill ordinary ants. You need to educate them, enlighten them on the things that they need to do so that by the time the sledgehammer will be coming, uh, the elephant would have grown to have understanding so that the armor will not have so much uh, impact on it. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hayara. I, I want to quickly pick uh, on uh, Olujide Ojo's question. Uh, he is asking, what is FRCN at implication on government agencies to parastatus who does not file their annual audited financial statement to Financial Reporting Council? Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, I, I appreciate this forum. Um, a lot of... Um, uh, pertinent issues are being uh, brought up. Um, public sector is um, a very critical sector in the economy. In fact, um, the largest spender, in fact, the driver, the, the driver of the economy. So um, in that essence, the operators in public sectors are expected to be transparent, to be accountable by um, preparing their financial statements and submitting in line with the FROC Act. However, we get back to um, prior to the adoption of office of His Excellency Ambassador Shaibu Adamu Ahmed, uh, we, we, we are not focusing more on public sector. We are more focused on private sector. But um, Ambassador Ahmed uh, made a commitment of um, trying to ensure uh, public sector accountability by letting their financial reporting accord with um, global practices. It was only then that uh, we started um, um, moving our searchlight on um, public sector. And I'll tell you, since last year, um, we sent out about um, 600 um, request to entities and um, I'm telling you it is very reassuring up to this moment prior to what we used to have uh, we have considerable number of entities in the public sector that have submitted their 2021 um, financial statements we are reviewing them I will tell you the simple truth uh, it's not at the level we expect it to be and again since it is an area we are starting engaging nearly, I think it will also be very, very wrong to start with sanction and penalty with them. Uh, what we put strategic engagement we have is to um, educate them on the areas they need to know because we revealed their financial statements. We detected so many um, things that ought not to be there 
So the council practically mounted um, um, what we call learning and development exercise uh, last year, three um, zones. And this year, we continued it with what we call timely rendition of financial statements. I, I tell you, we had close to 600 participants in um, the four zones. And the awareness is something else. And, um, and that um, also up the submission level. So when we conclude in a matter of um, time, all the sensitization, enlightenment, and education, we had already informed them that we are starting the sanction next time. And we are collaborating with National um, Assembly, especially the public accounts committees of, the, of both arms, in ensuring that um, we get the public sector do the right thing. So I, I, would, I would want you to focus less on sanction and uh, view the effort we are doing to get them to do the things right. Thank you. Brilliant, brilliant. And uh, uh, I think what the FRCN is currently doing has to do with uh, uh, capacity building. When you build the capacity, uh, then people have understanding of what to do. And thereafter, we can talk about sanction. Uh, I think uh, FRCN is doing, you know, wonderfully well. And I can give kudos uh, to our institute, bringing more enlightenment to our members on the things that they need to know to move even the profession forward. Uh, I will be going on a very, very short break. Uh, and uh, uh, when I come back, I will continue uh, to interrogate my teacher who has been doing justice even to the topic of today about audit regulation, what a professional accountant needs to know. And I believe that you have been tapping from the knowledge of our doctor, Hiai Ayara. I a short while. As a finance professional in a disrupted business landscape, what does it take to be in demand? What does it take to attract great paying international roles? If you're an ICANN member, it'll just take one exam. That's all it takes to complete the globally recognized SEMA professional qualification and the internationally in respected CGMA designation. As a SEMA member and a CGMA designation holder, employers will look at you as a finance professional, constantly acquiring new skills to add value to the business. That's why they'll be willing to pay premium to hire and retain you. If you have five years of relevant experience and are an ICANN member, you can directly sit for the final exam of the SEMA Professional Qualification, the Strategic Case Study Exam. Start studying the SEMA Professional Qualification. Prepare to make an impact. Jamaway done. <laughs> oh, you. welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, uh, my professional colleague. And uh, on this uh, episode of today, I've actually been guesting Dr. Iai Ayara, FCA, who have been doing justice uh, to some of the things that we need to know about the audit regulation as a professional accountant. Welcome back, Dr. Ayara. Uh, my teacher. 
Thank you very much, my uncle. You are not my teacher today. <laughs> <laughs> you see, oh, it's always the reverse. Uh, you know, you've always been setting questions, but I think I'm in position to give the question uh, to my teacher. So la, 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 let's let's move on. Uh, yeah, there is this requirement for audit committee members uh, to register with the Financial Reporting Council. Does it mean? Uh, only accountants are recommended to be members of the audit committee. Thank you very much. Um, again, this is a topical issue. I would want to dwell a little on um, the straightforward answer is no. Okay. There is no requirement anywhere that says um, only professional accountants uh, should be there. I, I remember our engagement with um, um, shareholders association. Initially, when the audit regulation um, came, even the exposure draft, they were worried. But after they had engagement with us, um, they stated it openly that they have gotten clarification and they are satisfied. What the council requested and what the audit uh, regulation is saying is that members of the audit committee are part of the process of financial reporting. This is a committee that approves or recommends on a uh, external auditor. They look at all financial reporting issues, including capital audit, including this. And we are saying, since you are involved in financial reporting process, it is incumbent on you to register with the council. Nobody said that uh, all of you must be. But again, for you to perform this technical professional duty, wouldn't it be incumbent on you to be financially literate? Hmm. The examples I used to give, would you get non-medical people to pretend over medical reporting process? Hmm. The hmm. response absolutely would be no. No. So when people look at it, audit committee has a very, very peculiar responsibility amongst all other committees on the board and even statutory committees. And that is why in a bid to create sanity, in a bid to get these things done, we requested that audit committee members should register so that when issues pertaining to financial reporting or financial statement fraud happens, we will be able to track and know where the issues are be able to instead of a blanket social so mm. that is the essence of it it's not that um they have to be uh this however remember that Kama had made even um, um a rule and uh, both the ncc the 2018 and the audit regulation openly specified um, that the membership at least they should be financial the threat. So uh, that is the extent we require not being professional accountant. No. Brilliant, brilliant. And I think that uh, gives clarity uh, to him. You have to be financially literate and for you to be, uh, it will definitely be advisable that you acquaint yourself with the basic uh, uh, knowledge of uh, finance. Uh, la, 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 the, the, while, while we are coasting home, uh, let me just take this question uh, with you. Uh, based on some of the uh, so many alleged uh, reports of financial fraud in Nigeria, uh, doctor, to what extent do you think that integrity and credibility of Nigerian professional accountant has been dented or upheld? Mm. Um, uh, 
you wouldn't be class of okay there are two sites in my village um permit me to stay of me shut out of time and here's your honor when one finger gives hand his finger into oil it will soil all other fingers all other. Mm. so um especially as it relates to accounting when there is one fraud when there is they generalize all accountants and all, all, all but i i assure you that um it has in no way significantly impaired the reputation we have each profession having uh, the black sheep here and there and uh, that does not mean um, um, such profession should be completely written away again that is the more reason why both the professional accounting organizations and the regulatory body should come together so that we can stem this issue of fraud whether it's financial um statement fraud or any other fraud especially sir when it involves a professional accountant it doesn't mm. tell well on the profession mm. no matter the side it is so we should really come together and that is why when the financial reporting council sees any breach in or non-compliance in any accounting uh, standards we usually frown over it and if we go to the extent frc uk or frc i mean pod america i mean people will, will shout at the top of their voices but it is all um done to instill discipline frc uk penalizes all these firms 14 30 million pounds hmm. for financial reporting fraudulent uh, practices and failure thank you and they contain it the most importantly the thing that gladdens my heart is most of the big firms have been penalized in those um, jurisdictions including south africa they never contested instead mm. they they will tell you they're collaborating because it is usually painstakingly taken and what is it is to stem the 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 profession from going under and because um financial statement is really very generic and it affects a lot of a lot of people so um i i wouldn't subscribe that they are a profession who are doing the best it is what the society is um, breeding that is making um, the accounting this thing look as if um, we are not getting our ass together thank you of course uh, is the understanding of the people about the profession and like you say a uh, situation where we can collaborate to make sure that together we uh, push out the quacks our uh, own professional people that are denting the integrity and accuracy of our profession uh the better for us uh finally finally my teacher uh let me just say this and uh, this seems to be uh, a personal thing that i'll bring forth to you sir as a nigerian and a professional accountant by excellence which i can attest to among your so many achievements in life, what is your general and undiluted counsel or advice to the Nigerian professional accountants? <laughs> um, honestly, uh, that, that, that is a simple straight issue integrity hmm. in all we are doing money is not all we should be able to stand and defend the qualities of our profession we should do things let me tell you i tell people that audit profession is the only profession i know that when the clients hire them they do not work to satisfy the clients 
because they work in public interest. If they work in public interest, they are therefore expected to be of high. Uh, uh, uh. And again, most importantly, sir, there's one common thing. Permit me, my colleagues, if I say this. Most times, when we qualify, we need very hard to qualify. After qualifying, being a professional accountant, uh, a chartered accountant, we abandon knowledge. We don't seek to update our knowledge. Most issues we have in audit is because of the level of technical competency of the audit partners. I will urge all of us that we should uphold, if not for anything, in any issue you are doing, you ask yourself, where would this take me to? Hmm. I was discussing with a friend of mine, um, he said he did a lot of investment, and I acknowledge he did something and somebody wanted to um, appreciate him. He refused. He said it is in the cut of the work. See, tomorrow, that guy is being seen. If you see anybody, you will recommend. He said, ah, he will do it without asking for anything. Hmm. There's hmm. nothing more valuable. There's nothing. People like uh, the, the fathers of our profession, we saw them as people of high integrity. When you call them, you say, ah, please don't even go near them with anything bright, anything this, anything that. They don't want their name to be spent. I think that is my take home. Auditors bring accountability and transparency. They bring reliability. But my brother, somebody who is not trustworthy, how can he bring reliability? How can he bring mm. accountability to the issue? Let us please have a retrospect. Let us please have an inward assessment and go back to that era where accountants are highly respected and see as people of high level of integrity. That would be my... Oh. my what, what wonderful, wonderful. He is as said, I should request for another one uh, to continue to talk uh, with our guest for today, Dr. Hiai Ayara. FCA uh, he is a teacher for excellence, and I can tell you for free give him five hours, he's dishing it out, dishing it out. But time is not always our friend, and then on this note, we will be bringing. Uh, to uh, close the session for this Thursday, seventh uh, day of the seventh month in the year 2022. And I have been discussing with uh, Dr. Hiai Ayara FCA, uh, who have done justice to things that has to do with other regulation. But before I go, let me appreciate all our audience once again for being part of the program today. The things that you need to do as one of the parting shot from our guest today is to make sure that you, you breathe and you give integrity in all you do. Note, money, it's not everything. And everywhere you find yourself, make sure that you defend this, pro this profession. Seek knowledge always. Uh, ignore those past things that you have learned. Bringing new ideas, inject it more. And I can assure you that we will build a better institute. We will build a better nation. And globally, we will satisfy humanity. Thank you very much for being part of this program today. I want to implore you, join me next week, Tuesday, as I bring to you another refreshing time on I can on air. Make sure that you tell someone that will tell someone about this program. I remain your anchor, Olusha Son Okwade. See you next week, Tuesday. Bye for now. <laughs>